Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama with another episode of Business in Hawaii. A beautiful place, like the background of Waimea Bay, of the ocean, for a state of 1.2 million residents, a lot more daily from Asia, from the mainland, from Europe as tourists. And today we're going to be investigating the world of top CEOs, C-level individuals who lead organizations, business, Hawaii Fortune 250, and how it's unique, how it's same in some aspects with recruiting globally. We have Benjamin Anchetta Jr. from Inkinen and Associates. He's the president, and he's with me now. Hi, Ray. How are you? Fine, fine. So, what do you now do at uh, Inkinen and Associates? How, how do you define your role uh, in this uh, market, uh, in business, and, uh, and, and in an economy dominated by tourism, retail, hospitality, but yet there's banking uh, areas, insurance, some manufacturing, a lot of service. So you see the landscape, and what have you discovered uh, about your role in this world? Um, so Inkin and Associates, we focus on executive search. We're the premier executive search firm in Hawaii. Uh, and we really focus on finding leaders for Hawaii organizations. Um, we, are, we are generalists when it comes to industry. We work in all the industries that you mentioned, uh, tourism and lodging, travel, uh, the hotel industry, healthcare, insurance. Um, we don't focus on industries, we don't focus on verticals, we actually focus really on Hawaii. And our job is to bring Hawaii, leadership into Hawaii and, 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 and populate it throughout the, the, the company. Last spot, I want to get back to you, sure. because that's a, a big theme uh, mm -hmm. of, of this current uh, age. Uh, and, and so, why don't we uh, kind of uh, define it a lot more. Uh, there are other executive firms globally, and of course, uh, uh, that do business in New York and London and Tokyo and Singapore and so forth, and others that are very uh, focused just on New York or uh, Cincinnati or San Diego markets. Uh, what, what is so different about the state and its market compared to a global market? Because sometimes you do bring people from other areas of the United States uh, or uh, globally. But yet, uh, when we uh, talked before, there's value on people who were born and raised here uh, that uh, who can really uh, assume leadership roles in Hawaii. So uh, give us a little background on that. Sure. Um, I'll start with kind of in our, within our industry, within executive search. Uh, there are huge global competitors that do business all across the world in every major market. Uh, and they do drop into Hawaii every once in a while to do an executive search, typically from a West Coast office. Um, within our industry, you also have boutiques like us that are either um, regional boutiques where we focus on a particular geographical territory, or you have people that might focus on just an industry vertical like insurance. Um, and so what we're trying to do is really carve out our place in the market as being the best here in Hawaii. Um, and that's what we focus on. Um, we try not to focus too much on the competition um, and what, more on what we do best. Um, and I think that's important because Hawaii is a really unique place. I think that gets talked about a whole lot. Um, people don't always know why. Um, some, <laughs> okay. of the, you know, some, some of the reasons are, are, are self-evident. Right. We're geographically isolated, 2,000 miles from the nearest landmass, a uh, relatively small population, you know, less than a million and a half people. Um, there are other cities in the U.S. that have populations like that, but they're connected by highways mm -hmm. um, and much shorter flights. Um, for us, being an island chain in the middle Pacific, being as isolated as we are, uh, we're a less fluid labor market, and that causes us some really unique challenges, um, which is why I think our services are really valuable here. Now, you left for the mainland also and lived there for how many years? 17 years. 17 years, mm -hmm. wow. And so uh, you came back and experienced a high growth uh, adventure with ProService, a company that's very mm -hmm. famous now in, in Hawaii, but that allowed you really to interact with C-level people, uh, individuals from mm -hmm. throughout the state, because HR and benefits and payroll, of course, affects every company. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me about that, uh, your mainland experience, coming back to Hawaii, any culture shock or, or uh, business, how business is done here, vis-a-vis -vis the mainland, 
Uh, you laugh. Go ahead. Sure. Um, you know, I'll start with the reason why I left. Like, like many kids that graduate from high school here, I was looking for an experience to go and learn on the mainland. So I went to college um, in Minnesota, of all places. I took a big jump. And I ended up getting my degree there and working on the mainland in various places and getting a graduate degree over 17 years. I wasn't really looking to come back to Hawaii. I actually got a call from a friend, one of the partners who had initially purchased ProService, to come back and join the firm. Um, and that was a tremendous opportunity for me. Uh, it's really difficult to move back to Hawaii when you get used to mainland career pathing, right. the speed at, at which right. you develop, and especially competition. Um, but ProService was a was a kind of a, a unicorn here for Hawaii, where it was growing really fast. Um, the valuation was increasing. It was private equity owned, and so it provided a lot more opportunities than most companies in Hawaii that might be larger and more mature. Um, it was an incredible experience. I joined that executive team. Uh, held several roles there, the last of which was overseeing um, sales marketing and account management. And that allowed me to get out and talk to, as you said, so many business owners, um, small to medium size, all the way up and to the larger enterprises. what did they tell enterprises. you? What was any, any themes that came out of your discussions? Of course, they want a smooth running um, operation mm -hmm. uh, and, and they want a happy workforce, uh, paying them on time and, and, and the benefits and so forth. But what else did you learn uh, from your interactions that gave you uh, insights that, oh, Hawaii is, is different from the mainland? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of local businesses struggle with, with growth because we're a relatively small market that depends on money from the outside. Um, but for the last 10 plus years, that, that money has been flowing in through tourism. I think people have been struggling with growth because of uh, the employee shortage, especially right. in skilled areas. So we areas. go back to mm -hmm. the uh, theme of lack of trained staff mm -hmm. in order to grow in, yeah. in Hawaii. And even beyond that, I would say beyond just trained staff, is lack of leaders who are willing to take risks and take on roles that they might not be comfortable with. Um, and that's the kind of personality that will drive growth within organizations, in my mind. So w which is it that uh, Hawaii has an economy that, and, and that kind of uh, limited size that constrains growth, mm. or uh, that there are few leaders you can hire to drive growth, think out of the box, and really delegate and, and promote great uh, uh, you know, managers? You asked me an either or, and I think that that's an and. <laughs> okay. um, I think you know, being an isolated market, depending on tourism, that, that will limit our growth in terms of the total number of dollars coming in. Um, but once those dollars come in, our ability to multiply them, I think, depends on our ability to produce uh, things for export, to um, you know, provide more and more valuable services to people who are here. Um, and that takes talent. That takes people who are willing to take risks. That takes entrepreneurship. Um, it takes a lot of skills and a lot of um, motivation that, that, that isn't you know, readily available here. I think. I'm not going to ask another and or question. <laughs> But again, going back to the differences between the Hawaii economy, business, mm -hmm. uh, culture, and the mainland, uh, there's always people out there, uh, CEOs, who, give, who are thinking of hiring somebody mm -hmm. or, or uh, the board trying to hire a, a CEO, COO, that says, oh, we can't find them in, in Hawaii. We have, mm -hmm. to go to, we have to go to the mainland with these skill sets or uh, background. And uh, versus uh, uh, the homegrown, train people, you know, the, the pathways that, that really give local people opportunities in the boardroom. Uh, is that an and or a question? Um, I, I mean, I think it's definitely an issue that every organization deals with when they have a major leadership position that becomes vacant for whatever reason. Uh, I think because we're a small market, there are relatively few large companies, you know, there's a, rel a, a small talent pool. Um, we don't have the fluidity between our market and other markets to bring in people. And so uh, it's a higher risk hire whenever you bring in someone from, from the mainland. Uh, and when we talk to our clients, they almost always have a preference for people here if they can find the skill set that they need. Um, you know, there are certain roles where um, it might only exist in a very large company in one industry. And if there are only two or three different competitors of those in this market, then you know, by definition, there won't be very many people to fill that role. But we've yeah. heard of examples of, of top people uh, being hired from the mainland, mm -hmm. and they go flying back to the mainland after two or three years and could not fit or could not mm -hmm. really uh, uh, understand or become part of the culture or HANA of an organization here in Hawaii. 
Does that limit, uh, again, it, it, when you think it's a kind of like a paradox, uh, trying to draw people uh, who mm -hmm. are, uh, have great skill sets, but they can't fit into a, mm -hmm. a culture or the cost of living uh, for various reasons uh, in, in Hawaii, is that still an issue out there? Absolutely, it's an issue. It's one that we see every day uh, in our business. Um, and you know, I, 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 just because people may turn around and leave within two or three years, I don't think that that's without value. Um, I think if, if going into that, you kind of know that that's a risk, um, there are certain things that you can do to help to mitigate that risk or at least try to right. maximize right. the value you get from those people while they are, while they are here. No, I think, yeah. I think you have a good point. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. <laughs> no. It hasn't been around since statehood or, or even before. So, so that, that's, that's a good point. Uh, it's just that uh, the board or uh, uh, the people who are leading the search should have a plan mm -hmm. to really uh, find areas uh, to succeed. How does this new hire su succeed? And mm -hmm. give, him a, give him or her a roadmap and training in that area. Do you see that happening though? I, I don't see that happening a whole lot. Um, I think when people hire in those high level executive positions, they tend to just assume that the person is gonna hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they may not go the extra mile to really make sure that person is embedded in the community. Uh, I don't, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of explicit plans to that effect. No. Good question, though. <laughs> uh, maybe that's something uh, to explore with many boards uh, on Bishop Street. Uh, the other thing that you just uh, talked about uh, it is, of course, on on culture, and um, is is Hawaii culture really that uh, different uh, for people to uh, navigate? I think absolutely it is. I think the business culture here is really different from, well, there are also different business cultures between the West Coast of the U.S. and the East Coast of the That's U.S. True. So yeah. saying that Hawaii business culture is yeah. unique, I don't think is all right. that, um, that different. Or New Orleans, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, exactly. Or I, I haven't done business there, but yes. <laughs> right. But yes, I mean, you know, the, the, the dominant cultural paradigms that exist in, in any geographical market are going to cause that kind of uniqueness. And, you know, Hawaii is very much a mix of East and West. We have a lot of Asian right. business culture here. Um, we tend to be more consensus oriented. Um, we don't tend to have leaders that go out front and, and, and take big risks. So yes, it is different. And I think integrating into that culture when you're coming from a market that's very different, right. um, it, it takes some lumps to do it. Well, we're gonna go yeah. back to some of the themes mm -hmm. you just uh, arose. Each one will take 30 minutes, but we'll be back after this exciting break. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at one o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about human stories about law and life. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Welcome back to this ever exciting episode of Business in Hawaii. My name is Ray Tuchiyama with our guest, Benjamin Anchetta from Inkinen Associates. We've had a lot of interesting insights into how, what is the culture of Hawaii, business culture? And Ben just mentioned several big themes here, and I just want to take several of them, just kind of delve into one uh, at a time. Consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, you think that uh, in Hawaii, you just can't tell people what to do and, 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 and order them, and they're gonna do what, exactly what uh, you said uh, they should be doing. I don't know if you can't order them, but I don't think that's the predominant business culture. I 
think you know people here like to get along, and there's some pluses and minuses to that. Uh, and I don't think you know just ordering people to do things is the is the preferred method of motivating people. Like it's usually let's get together, let's come to some kind of consensus decision, and get the team moving. So, awesome. so that kind of skill set would be ideal in a person coming from the outside. Um, again, I think it's a balance. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes having someone coming from the outside to shake things up is exactly oh, what you need. Okay. If you're in a turnaround, right. if you're in a very stable business, then sure, bring someone right. who's going to fit in. If you're in a turnaround, you need to break some china. Then you bring yeah. in a two to three year rental to come in and break it up okay. and then replace it with a, with a different we'll kind of start. That's a very good uh, yeah. point. Uh, risk. I think, you know, in, in much of the Hawaii economy, uh, there's a stable kind of uh, product or service, mm -hmm. hotels, uh, I mean, uh, all kinds of uh, banking, uh, retail. Uh, you know, there are, there, there's nothing from the outside that's coming in and suddenly having a uh, disruption or, uh, or paradigm shift. Or do you see them? I mean, people have been talking about the end of many things, but we still mm -hmm. kind of muddle along and the and, mm -hmm. and economy is doing great. Uh, but yet looking into the future, uh, are we truly uh, planning for the 21st century? Oh boy, you open up some some, <laughs> some big issues there. I mean, okay. do I see disruption? I, I, I definitely see it. Oh, I mean, do? I think things come a little bit slower to yeah. Hawaii, but you, I mean, you see the same large retailers that are disappearing right. here. You know, Forever 21 was one right. of those recently. But that's been going on for right. a generation, right? right? Back not, to the Liberty new, House days but, and it, but it is shocking um, to see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and people now worry about Amazon in the same way they worried about Costco and Walmart right. before, and there'll be something else after Amazon. So. Disruption is going to keep on happening in the market. It'll happen slower here in Hawaii. We can look to the mainland for analogs for that. But the hotel um, industry seems to be stable. I mean, the, the, what is there to replace this? I don't this? know. They uh, weren't so happy about transit accommodation rentals, yeah. right? I mean, there's you know, an Airbnb comes in the market and shakes that up. Too. Right, right. Um, and, you know, to, to the extent that we want to regulate that, that's fine. But there will be something else to replace it because there's a market demand there. But will... Uh, we'll, why companies look for uh, leaders who, who take risks or they want people to you know, stabilize uh, and, and meet quarterly mm -hmm. uh, you know, goals for shareholders. We were talking about shareholders and their yeah. lock on how people can do business or mm -hmm. how to do governance. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a whole new world where uh, you don't see a long range. Mm -hmm. you know, what are we... I mean, tourism, there should be a think tank on tourism. What will tourism be 10, 20 years? And we should be you know, planning ahead. But there isn't much uh, being done. Uh, do you think it's complacency or it's just that we can't respond to things that are, are way out in the future? So, uh, I, personally, you know, I, I don't know how much I believe in, 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 in big organizations or groups of organizations coming together to create really big plans for the future because I don't think any one of us knows what the future holds. Um, I believe the secret to success is going to be entrepreneurs and smaller companies taking risks. I think that's where you see more risk taking in our economy with smaller organizations that are looking to grow and, and, and capitalize on, on, uh, on opportunities in the marketplace. Um, large companies tend to be more risk averse. They tend to follow the market rather than lead it. So if you were um, going to be influencing the UH Scheidler um, uh, curriculum uh, going forward, and, and, and with your knowledge and insights of what great backgrounds and skill sets uh, future CEOs should have in their quiver, what would they be? Um, you know, I really like the focus on entrepreneurship that they have at the Scheidler School. I think that's critically important in today and tomorrow's uh, work economy. Uh, I don't think we know what the jobs of the future are going to look like even 10 or 15 years from now. And so I think the best thing we can do is prepare people to, um, to recognize opportunities, to prepare themselves for those opportunities, build plans, and, and act. You know, I think this, the, the lean uh, startup movement has been a really great one for, to get people to, to take small actions in, in getting things moving. And I think that's probably one of the most important skills that I think that the workforce of tomorrow needs. Technology? Uh, technology is all around us. I think that's going to happen whether you train people for it or not. Um, I think you know, with the new generation of people coming up, they're, you know, they're natives. They, they grew up on, on, on cell phones and smartphones, whereas we did not. So 
you know, teaching technology, I, I don't know if that's as necessary because it's just, it's just shot through the curriculum as enabling tools already. So, um, but back to your, I guess, day-to-day -day business. Mm -hmm. Uh, where do the leads come from? Do you get a call from a board member out there or HR mm -hmm. and, and they say, oh, we have this profile. And, and then, but at the same time, when you read the, read the scope of responsibilities or it's a, oh, this, this doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe you're, look, you're searching, uh, looking to the moon for these type of candidates. So yeah. what, what, what are the stories you can tell yeah. us uh, about this interaction? How so, does it, where does it yeah. start? So, I, I mean, luckily, you know, when I acquired the business from the previous uh, owner, the founder, Kathy, a, a year and a half ago, um, you know, it came with a wonderful name. Uh, the Inkinen brand is really strong here. And so we get a lot of inbound calls. Right. I think there's, there, there are secular trends in the marketplace that people have been talking about for a long time with the silver tsunami. You know, there will be people retiring from leadership positions. There will need to be people to fill those spots. And so I feel like our, our work is needed more than ever. Um, we are, are companies planning, transition planning, successor planning? Uh, are they doing it well? I think companies are doing the best that they can with the resources they have available. I think, um, you know, we talked about the, the, the trend since the 70s and 80s of the focus on shareholder value right. and not on community value or right. value to employees. And so I think companies have been running leaner and leaner. This includes nonprofits right. um, for decades now. And so it's hard to do succession planning without internal redundancy. Mm -hmm. How do you train someone right. to be the next CEO if you don't have some fat in that managerial layer to allow that person to be, you know, to, to, to duplicate effort. Um, so I, I think that's a real challenge for organizations here. And so succession planning has become, well, that person is retiring, so I need to go hire someone else. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, how about family business? Uh, mm -hmm. is it, uh, of course, Hawaii is unique in that it used to be the big five until the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And they're all gone. And now it's a landscape of companies with fewer than 60, 50 people. That's, mm -hmm. that's bigs in some ways. And there's a top uh, portion of banks and insurance companies and hotels that are huge. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are they, what are they looking for? Do they come to you and discuss things, uh, family business? And what are the kind of uh, insights that you've gleaned in that mm -hmm. world? Uh, I think the family business um, sector of the economy is huge. I don't think people realize that most employees in the world are employed by family companies and not by big global public companies. Um, and it's a really dynamic market, you know, from small to very, very large. Um, even in Hawaii, we have some really large family-owned companies um, that, that people don't sometimes talk about or think about. Um, but I think there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there for family companies to, I think, forge a way forward and show Hawaii uh, how to run an organization that's more community-minded, mm -hmm. more focused on value you bring to a community than value you bring to a shareholder. Um, I think generally families do a little better job of succession planning. Um, it may not look like it all the time, but they have built-in succession plan, at least one layer, because they have right. family members. Right. But sometimes that's <laughs> yeah. not the right person. Not right. And, yeah. and that's, that, that's an example with, yeah. with Inkinen, where yeah. I took it over um, uh, from, from the owner, even though her daughter had, because her daughter had her own business right. and, and didn't want to take this one on. Um, but I think the uh, University of Hawaii has a great uh, center on the fa on the family business that's right that actually supports yeah. family businesses really well i've been to a few of those events yeah, professor butler is, yep, is exactly a dynamic guy. exactly yeah. um, and they do a great job of i think supporting family businesses through that generational transition process so i think family businesses are leaders they've been doing succession planning for really for so uh, when you beginning. came out this new uh world uh, that you do uh any surprises uh, that oh i didn't think of this or this was uh this is something that i didn't encounter in the previous uh, job or, or industry, anything that came, uh, came yeah. to you? What, what surprised me most was, was um, well, what I tell people about the business is it's very simple to explain, right? right? We right. find yeah. leadership exactly. uh, for companies, yeah. but it's really difficult to execute. Right? <laughs> okay. And so uh, it looks very easy from right. the outside, like, oh, you send me a resume, I hire them, you get paid, it's very <laughs> right. easy. But the amount of legwork that yeah. goes into getting that one great candidate right. that ultimately gets an offer and has an impact on that company um, it's, it's, it's shocking. Actually. Oh. Um, and that was the biggest surprise to me yeah. was, was, was how much effort it took to make every single place. And where, where, where would you see areas that you would like to see um, uh, much more uh, efficient in, in this process? Or is it mm. that ultimately it's about humans, uh, human people, uh, mm -hmm. human beings? And, and that's something you can control. It's sometimes emotional, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, uh, of course, logical, but mm -hmm. not so. What, what, anything? Yeah, I mean, I see technology and process as, as enablers to help us do what we do best. But ultimately, it's about us finding 
great matches for career opportunity and for, for company need. Uh, and that comes down to people understanding um, each other and understanding where an organization is headed. I think the, the editorial license that we have in making those matches is incredibly valuable. Well, you know? you're like a, yeah. kind of like a um, uh, nakuhodo. You put two people together you know, in marriage <laughs> sometimes. Uh, <laughs> do you spend a lot of time explaining about the candidate to the company, explaining the company to the candidate, which, which sometimes is more yeah. in all this? Uh, because you have not, I don't want to use the word sell, but you must describe it in a mm -hmm. way that it's a great fit mm -hmm. for, for the candidate and the company. Yeah. So I think it's all of the above. We spend a lot of time talking to both sides. Um, we don't think of ourselves as salespeople. Um, I think of it more of we're educating and consulting on both sides. We tend to be very candid about what the company's work culture is like mm -hmm. and what their strategic right. plan is. At the same way, we're very candid about what we believe the, the, the potential candidates' in, uh, strengths and weaknesses are. Because the last thing you want is for those people to get together and then there would be surprises because right, then right, you exactly. have yeah. you know divorces using your example. <laughs> right. and that's not good for anyone. Uh, yeah. Is there any case where you thought you did a really great job, but somehow the candidate declined, or the company says, "Oh, we're going to go." go. Uh, and, and and looking back, was there something that didn't make it happen? Every week, something like that, happens, <laughs> where right. we thought it was a it, yeah. it was potentially a great match. Right. Company makes an offer, right. candidate declines, oh, right. um, and that's you know yeah. I think that's a function of the right. market now where. Candidates have choices. It, it has become, in some way, a seller's market from the candidate's perspective. They, they might get multiple offers on the table before making the decision. And I think that's changed a lot um, in the last you know, 30 years uh, or so since Kathy had started the business. Well, you, yeah. you're in a dynamic place, in a dynamic uh, market and mm -hmm. industry, and we have to uh, close at this 30-minute uh, period. Uh, and we could go on forever on many, many topics. Thank you very much, Ben, uh, for your insights, and I hope the uh, CEOs of Hawaii Business 250 are listening intently and getting uh, ready to call uh, Ben on their next search or just to talk story and how to make a fit even better in the community. Thank you very much. This is Ray Tuchiyama.